mention the most interested spectator in America, Meldrick Taylor, who has a multi-million dollar date with Julio Cesar Chavez scheduled for March 17 of next year. Meldrick is in Philadelphia tonight. He joins us live via satellite now to talk to our Larry Merchant. Larry? Meldrick, good evening. Welcome to our show. Is this an anxious moment for you because your opponent in March has to get through this tonight for you to make an awful lot of money. Yes, yes, so Larry. My adrenaline is flowing right now to oh, baby, sit here and watch Chavez fight, take this fight, knowing that I'll be preparing for Chavez next year, March 17th. From, from the point of view of a professional fighter like yourself, forget for a moment that you're going to be his opponent. What is impressive about Chavez? Chavez is a very aggressive and a very persistent fighter. He has a lot of experience and I, I respect him as a champion. I think he's one of the best um, champions of all times. Have you ever fought anybody quite like him? And what do you expect to have to deal with and how do you expect to deal with it from this long-term perspective? I never faced an opponent like Chavez. Chavez, like I said, is a very superior boxer. He's a very patient fighter. But my skills put against his skills, I think, will be um, a very interesting fight. Now, you have a fight coming up Monday night in Atlantic City against somebody named Rocky Balboa. He's not a heavyweight, is he? <laughs> no, he's not, Larry. <laughs> All right. You had an injury uh, last year. You were out of commission for some seven months. Conditioning is going to be very, very important against a fighter as persistent with his stamina as Chavez has. Have you been able to get back to where you were before your injury to your leg? Well, Larry, um, I fought on um, September and I felt great. The, um, the lateral movement, you know, mobility was there. I don't think that I'm 100%, but I think I'm getting towards that um, point of being 100%. I feel great. I feel as though I'm getting stronger. As, as I go along, but, I, but by me having that long layoff, it had affected me a little bit, um, not getting the kind of work that I should have got, but um, now things are starting to get back into the perspective that I wanted to be in. Uh, let me make a correction. You are fighting in Philadelphia Monday night, right? Yes, I am, Larry. Your hometown. Uh, good luck, and I assume that uh, Mr. Chavez will be just as anxious as uh, on Monday night as you are tonight to see the both of you get through this and we'll talk to you later in the show for your impressions of the fight tonight good luck Meldrick Taylor is on the other end of our wire here Meldrick uh, your impressions of those first two rounds well Chavez seemed to be too stationary um, he seemed to start to pick up the pace now seem to figure out this guy Fuentes. In a matter of time, I think Chavez will start really taking over this fight, but right now he seems too stationary and too, and too, and too patient. Thank you, Meldrick. The fact that the unbeaten Meldrick Taylor, unquestionably the man with the fastest hands and feet in this weight class, might be salivating just a little bit as he looks on in Philadelphia because Chavez tonight does not look like the kind of fighter who would be favored to beat a Meldrick Taylor. What do you think, Meldrick? Well, we have to see March 17th. Chavez seemed to, be, to me to um, be a lot of, let's see, like a lot is on his mind right now. And it's like he's not really into the fight. But he really is impressive because it seems like everything he's throwing right now is a solid punch. I think a matter of time he will um, catch up to his guys for in twins. What about is, is the that, Oh, go ahead, Larry. Is that an analysis or a hope uh, right now? Because I have Fuentes uh, considerably ahead in this fight at this point. And I imagine Meldrick Taylor is uh, getting a little bit more anxious with each round. Back to you, Jim. And after Jim talks to Meldrick Taylor, we'll talk to Mike Tyson. All right, thank you very much, Larry. And we mentioned all night that the most interested spectator in America is the man who, unlike the man who made $30,000 to fight Chavez tonight, will get something on the order of a million and a half dollars to fight him March 17. Meldrick Taylor, what did you think of the last five or six rounds of Chavez's performance here? I was very impressed with what I saw in there. Chavez was a very, everything through was very solid. He was, looked very, very evacuating his punches and everything was accurate and everything was consistent. Um, I was very impressed with the last couple of rounds. He started to pick the pace up and get very strong at each round as each round progressed. 
and I was very um, impressed with what I saw. There's no secret to what Chavez does. There's no doubt that he'll try to do the same thing against you. What can you do against him to take advantage of your particular edges in speed and quickness? Well, Jim Lampley, I won't want to give away my, uh, my, my strategy, my game plan. Uh, I would just really look to um, offset him. I would have to be in 100% condition in order to be a guy like Chavez. I have the potentials and the skills to be Chavez with my own um, hand speed and foot speed. And um, believe me, come March 17th, the strategy I will have to be Chavez I will be victorious come March 17th. Without suggesting that you'll run, it seems obvious that you want to use the whole ring against a fighter like that. Um, well, I won't look to really um, utilize the whole ring. I'll look to really basically um, stand right there and then uh, use my upper body movement to um, get away from punches. And with, like I said, with my hand speed, I'm looking to be able to the punch every time. The best little bout that money can buy. Julio Cesar Chavez against Meldrick Taylor. Meldrick, thanks very much for being with us tonight. And we'll really look forward to March 17th. Thank you, Joe. All right. That should be a great fight in 1990.